Welcome to a new episode of Healing Conversation. And for this month, I have a new guest and it's uh, Sophie. And for those of you who don't know Sophie already, she's a writer, a soul guide, a traveler and anthropologist. And her first book is She's the Moon, and it's a collection of poetry and an essay. And Sophie is a creative woman uh, who believes in a very important message that we're all unique and must embrace our unique gems, even and especially if we don't fit in, uh, which I think is a beautiful message to start with. But first, I just want to welcome you back to the podcast. So hi, Sophie. Hi, very lovely to be here with you again. I have a very beautiful memory of four uh, former uh, videos together. So thank you for the invitation. Yeah, and also one of the topics that I really want to talk to you specifically about is intuition, because uh, for those who don't really know your work yet or haven't been following you, uh, I kind of know you from sharing very intuitive messages. Um, and I truly believe that kind of what you bring to the world kind of from my perspective and what I've seen from you so far is really to kind of reconnect with our own inner voice and intuition. So for those of the people who are listening, kind of where did that journey for you start to kind of reconnect with yourself and to start listening and opening up to these di uh, different messages? Yeah, um, that's a good question. And the first part of the answer is that it was really unexpected, uh, meaning I've never been planning when I was a young adult or, you know, earlier or teenager or child or whatever to, I would say, take this uh, intuitive and channeling or even writing path. Um, I was coming from a very, I would say, typical background and, you know, um, well, like a lot of studies and trying to find the good job and the good position and following this kind of um, main road, you know, what, that we must follow at some point. And what really opened myself to intuition again was sort of synchronistic and random was a few years ago. Um, now it's, it's starting to be like a long time ago, like seven, eight years ago. Um, I started to really feel I needed to change a lot of things in my life. And that started with uh, quitting a job, which was, you know, like a normal nine to five or maybe more nine to nine job. I think that was at the time, um, which was just aligned with what society and I think perhaps family and background and friends were expecting of me. But I was just feeling that I was losing my time and energy. And, you know, in a bigger way, maybe my life doing something that didn't feel aligned. So um, I decided to do some volunteering uh, in Asia and Cambodia. And this is when uh, a lot of things happened. Um, I had a lot more time. So firstly, it was just having more time that allowed to feel more intuitive, you know, because before I was always working or studying or trying to be only in the masculine energy, I didn't have space to be in my feminine flow. So I didn't even know I could write or receive messages. I just didn't have time. So only the fact of opening my eyes and my time to being elsewhere and, you know, discovering new people, new scenarios, new anything, sense, food, like all of that just felt like I was more in the present moment. And I started to feel uh, more intuitive. I didn't know what that meant at the time. I started to write some poetry when I was feeling very quiet. And then I started to uh, buy some tarot cards. But that was just, you know, for fun. And the more I went, the more uh, it continued. And um, after this, I had like a lot of changes in the romantic relationship area. And I went through like a sort of um, disappointing type of breakup. And when that happened, um, I felt very like lonely and, you know, uh, sad and really hurt and, you know, all that. And I had a lot of space and time around me. And in that moment, I think I was really sort of depressed. Um, and I started to do some Reiki to do some Reiki certifications and spend more time writing. And the more I was going, the kind of fast, it, it appeared that I had more to receive and to channel. 
So um, that step of the breakup was really key uh, because it stopped everything, you know, and I just had to take care of myself and do some self-love things such as journaling or going to yoga, doing some Reiki. I was just trying to nurture myself so that I could feel better. And that's in that space that new, uh, yeah, a new flow came in. You know, I allowed it. It's really so the process to sum that up is I think I I made some space progressively and then it sort of found me, you know. Yeah. But I let it happen. I mean, um, I was really curious to do some Reiki, to have cards, to um, I was just open to seeing what was behind that. And when I started to post the uh, updates, for instance, on Facebook or whatever, uh, I remember my first one, I felt like many years ago now, I felt totally crazy. I thought, you're going to pop that, like, you know, nobody's going to, maybe nobody's going to read it or resonate with that. And because I didn't know if I was really, um, what I was doing, you know, that was really the beginning. And then I practiced more. I tried to own the skills. I did more. Um, Reiki certifications who really which really opened more of the channels and the practice um, helped this become more also grounded and more like easy to open and to close and in some way more uh, mature you know yeah and I find it also very interesting that you shared it in the beginning you didn't really know what you were doing yet and yeah. I find that's very important to mention because I know, especially for myself, but for most people, that's kind of how like the journey or like a big transition in life, how it often begins. Um, yeah. And you shared a little bit also about like exploring uh, with tarot cards in the beginning too. And then it kind of reminds me of the archetype of the fool and that th we start the journey actually a little bit as a fool. So uh, I find that there can be a big fear in being a beginner at something mm. not just only like a beginner when it comes to at a level but also doing and starting something completely new yeah um, and I know and especially now um, that there are a lot of people that are in different jobs or different positions in life but they're very discontent Hmm. or maybe even going towards depression and anxiety and I think it was already a thing a couple of years ago especially during the time but now it's probably a lot more frequent like a lot of people are in this position now yeah so for people are tuning in and they're wanting to undergo transition and to try something new like they're in the place of like you said my schedule is completely full I don't have a lot of space but I know I don't want to continue doing this for the rest of my life. Um, what has kind of helped you in that early stages of that process? Mm, yeah, that, yeah, thank you for bringing that up because I do feel also that more and more, like I don't know, you know, I haven't studied the numbers and the data, but I feel that more and more people feel this need to live in more alignment with what they really want and really need. And our conditioning and the way society works often is about always doing and producing and not really asking ourselves questions, doing what you're supposed to do, what, you know, you, you choose a path, you study something, and then you just follow through. And you never really take the time to discover if you have unique talents or if you have something else you want to explore or if you want to do nothing, you know, it's just we our schedules are full and we must always do one year of that and then the following is already you know planned so if in between you have a realization or something major that happens you're already taken by the the following step you cannot change direction you have to continue and i think that uh, that can be good for some and that can be um an issue for others you know that just depends how we uh, what's our life path and, and all that. But to answer your question, um, really what helped in the beginning was actually major discontent. I mean, I would go to work every morning and feel that 
really I was losing the the day or the week not really losing because I was learning something you know but I felt so I felt I was playing a role and I felt I had something else to do I didn't know why what exactly but I knew that without any space and and time and days I just couldn't even explore it. I just couldn't even, you know, try to go to a new club or to, I mean, um, in, in French, we said the club for an activity, you know, or hobby you want to try, right? I couldn't even really do that. I mean, the evenings was a little tricky. So weekends, but we had to rest. And like, that was really tricky. So the fact that time was missing really got to my, I would say nerves <laughs> in some way. And um, I applied to, I don't know, like a lot of things in the world to do some volunteer in, a, I don't like that word, but, uh, you know, the underdeveloped or developing countries. This is really not a word I, I like, but at the time, this is what I was believing also, you know, going to a country where I could support women or family in need of more education. You know, it was a very uh, sort of um, Western and sort of, you know, white approach of life that I had at the time. So this is what I, I was looking for to help. And I saw this was my way of helping. Um, and so I applied to many, many things and nothing was really working. Uh, so I, I can share with everybody that when you really feel you have to do something, even if you receive like 10 or 20 no's, you have to keep going. Because if you feel in your heart that's your past, then somewhere that's true. And it's the rejection is a redirection. So at one point, somebody will open a door and that will be the right door for you, right? So when we have a no, it doesn't mean that the project or the idea um, is wrong or bad for us. It means more that we need more time maybe to find the right door uh, into that step. So one day I found somebody and very quickly they found a woman and, 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 and I could go to Cambodia and there, uh, I could quit the job and because I didn't feel I could quit the job without knowing where I was going. So now I would do differently, but at that time I needed to know what was happening after. So I needed at least one, you know, one thing for after, like one safety net, um, which wasn't really financial because it was volunteering, but which was something to do, right? Because I wasn't used to not working or being in the void. So I was not um, familiar with it and maybe scared of it. So I needed to know what was happening next. And eventually that step of Cambodia was really key. So that was all, all good, but I really need to know what was happening afterwards. Otherwise, I don't think I would have found the strength to leave the big job and the Paris and all that, you know? So this is how it started. You feel like we do kind of need those next steps? right to just find something and to just yeah. find something that appeals to you um, yeah because especially when I think in more like western world and especially in west europe like we're very programmed to have a plan I know yeah. in, in school I think in France it's pretty much the same but we're very conditioned to like what are you going to be when you're older and like when you're very young and you have actually have no clue so you just say something and often we just start what we say out loud, we should start living that life without actually having done the deeper processes that actually connect you to your truth. Yeah. Um, and I also find it very um, interesting because what really comes up in your story is kind of that intuition finds you actually in the openness, in the spaciousness. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, and when we don't create that spaciousness in our life and we don't even have to travel to a different country but like just even in our day-to-day -day life um if you don't create that spaciousness then those insights and all these different things they're not able to find you somehow yeah uh, so all these messages and all these intuitive insights and wisdom they're already there you already have access to it but it's about kind of re kind of i don't know reorganizing i don't know if that's the right world but kind of um creating a more open structure actually yeah to allow it to come through so um are there 
practices or things on your path that helped you to learn to be more in that open spaces uh, to sure. create it in your life and maybe share a bit about the process what it's like for you yeah yeah um so just one thing before I answered this mm -hmm. I really liked what you just shared about intuition that it's a matter of allowing uh, something that's already present I, I say sometimes we don't get like certified intuition or we don't it's really not about learning it's more about allowing discovering it's present and then allowing again and again which is practice but doesn't have um I need to find if I'm intuitive or I need to find intuition it's it's present it's uh it's just receptivity right it's very feminine in its energy so I really liked what you explained. Um, so the practices I that helped me develop that, develop this um, spaciousness around me, I'd say, uh, is a lot connected to nature. So I like to go in nature and have, you know, very simple, like have walks. And, and sometimes I'm going to be guided to listen to some music. Sometimes I'm going to feel guided to lay in the ground or to, you know, depending on the weather, whatever. But nature and it's um a lack of you know productivity and lack of um how to put it of work and and sort of it, it just is and it just changes when it's time you know it's not forcing it feels very it is you know calm and it changes right so it has a very grounding effect on me so just being in nature um is powerful movement also um, I'm, I do some yoga, but I'm not really using yoga that much, really walking and just, you know, moving the way I want to move even, um, yeah, having walks or changing rooms or all that, the movement is helping me not get too much into the mind. When I like work all day like this, I tend to I'd be a lot in the mind again, you know, and have repetitive thoughts. And so I often say that movement and nature are really um, very useful. And apart from this, I'll say just trusting yourself is a big practice because when you start and feel you have messages or you can help others or you can channel, it feels a little crazy, I think, to be honest. Um, and it's normal also to feel crazy because we want to be sure we don't say something totally uh, inaccurate. So that's also normal to be a little scared. Um, that means there is some integrity also with that. But um, we need to trust ourselves and to practice maybe with friends firstly, um, you know, to just try and practice as long as we need to and then to really feel um, it is accurate or it is trustworthy or it is helping you know even if it wasn't fully accurate but it's helping it's saying the right thing for the person at some point then it's helping in some way so um, one really important practice is to keep practicing practicing keep um like i have an intuition for instance even for something minor not only with you know updates channelings and writing or clients but just i have an intuition for something in my life I'm going to practice receiving it, like letting it go, maybe to see if it comes back. And it's not like, you know, an emotion or a reaction or just like um, an intense feeling. So I'm like, oh, I think that's a good intuition. I let it go for a while. And then if it comes back and, and I, you know, I feel it's intuitive, I feel it's not again reactionary energy, for instance. And it's telling me to do something or to change something or to take a lip. I'm going to practice. So practice is not only for um, writing and things like that, which I'll say something about just after, but practice is, intuition is a major tool in our lives, uh, even for organizing our days or feeling when maybe we need rest, we need to go out, you know, all those intuitive nudges can just be a major support for the daily, the daily life. So even practicing that, it gives you confidence because then you see your life is progressively changing in a positive way because you, you listen more to yourself actually, right? So that's a big practice too. And on a more, um, I would say, um, activity type, 
uh, energy doing some writing when we feel like, for instance, if I feel like I want to release something or I really need to write down something because I'm confused or whatever, I'm going to just write something and I'm not really paying attention to the result or, uh, or if I will ever share it with anybody, I'm going to write for myself. Uh, and see what happens. And that just opens the flow, you know, between the heart and, and the throat chakra, which is the written or the vocal expression, or if it's a channeling between the crone and the throat, it depends, but it just makes the energy flow. And the more it flows, the less we are scared about uh, writing or, you know, doing something the daily because we, we felt it. So it's practice is, is many things, many different things in some way. Yeah, and it's very interesting. Um, also, the way you already explained more a bit of your intuitive writing practice and that it's so important to not go in with a specific result in mind. I find it very important, like you said, because like even if I never use it, because it allows you to be in a very open state of mind. Yeah. Or going into the flow. And I, Feel like the difference between a little bit more like the masculine form of writing and creating which is not bad like we need both but um intuition yeah. is more like the feminine aspect right yeah so then it's about the way i differentiate is the feminine is more about the process and the masculine is often more about the result or the goal um yeah so that's why when we write down goals and do things like that, it can feel very masculine. Yeah. Right? Which is not bad. There's a place for it. But I find that because if you've grown up in like the Western culture, we've kind of been overly programmed in that way. Yeah. And I find especially as women and most women are naturally, what feels most natural is to be more in the feminine energy. Yeah. And of course, every human being is unique. There's not like um, everyone has the same amount of percentage of it doesn't work like that. But I would say in my own experience um, and connecting with a lot of different women all around the world is that for most women, especially who feel drawn to more to intuitive or creative work, that being more in a feminine energy is what feels most natural and when like living more from an energy life seems to just like literally flow more yeah like opportunities come more naturally uh, also the way of creating like you said the way of writing it's no longer um having to force it but it it kind of comes to you and of course it is you do have to show up for it and that's very important um, yeah so what has really helped you to reconnect more of your feminine energy? Because you mentioned that it, the beginning was very masculine, like a full schedule to like yeah. the traveling and going, transitioning more into that feminine energy. So what has helped you to really kind of rediscover your femininity, so to speak? Hmm. Yeah, that's a beautiful question. And I agree we need both of the feminine and the masculine, you know, and it's really a matter of balance, I feel. Uh, if it's overly masculine, that's a lot we're used to. So that can feel heavy. We don't have enough space and time to flow. And it's also like it can be very powerful. And I believe really both work very well together. For instance, I say sometimes that if the feminine can be like the gift, like the masculine can give it structure. For instance, um, somebody that's intuitive and is writing a lot, then one day if they want to create a book or um have some tarot cards or whatever at some point the masculine is going to be strong and structures to come in service to the feminine gift so those two are really um working together like the the defender and the protector of the gift for instance that can be also another interpretation or to follow through when we feel lower and not, you know, drawn in emotions if we feel depressed, but keep practicing, for instance, that type of masculine is very potent. If it's also like if they're not in disagreement, meaning the masculine wants this, the feminine wants that, but if they serve the same larger vision, they tend to work well together. And um, the femininity uh, for me, um, 
it's little like the intuition that we talked about before. I feel it, it just happened because I was less stressed. So when I started those travels and those months abroad, I had more time. I was less stressed. I had less work pressure. I was also meeting people, and that's a very important point. I, I met more of my tribe, especially people I'm really very good friends with since. And I feel I could be more of myself. I feel that before, partly I was myself, but also perhaps sometimes, but I didn't know that, but I was probably playing a role because I could feel something was misaligned, but I wasn't doing anything about it. So I was sort of fighting you know, against myself. Um, and then I met new people and new environments where I could, I felt something was safer um, for me to express myself more fully and more perhaps truly, authentically. And just finding those spaces um, open something, you know, because when we are starting this journey, we don't really know where we're going. So we don't exactly know what's going to unfold. So we don't know like that we're going to write or do yoga, or whatever. What we need is an environment that's not going to be judgmental or that's not going to bring pressure or that's going to understand the power of time, you know, and the power of not forcing or not constantly asking questions or asking, so what are you going to do? So why are you here? You know, uh, just, okay, presence. This is what's changing, right? And those people and those environments that I met abroad, especially there, um, they are very familiar with the energy of change. They know sometimes people change. So they, it was very safe to be vulnerable and to be like, I'm evolving. I, you know, I wasn't using that word, but just saying, I don't exactly know what I'm going to do, but I can feel I'm changing. And only saying this opened like a, a way to actually change. You know, I didn't feel like uh, trapped with questions and why, why then, you know. So I think the environment played a really important role um, for myself. And, and then I, I kept trying to choose uh, places that could resonate with that. I feel that a few years after the beginning, or perhaps for some just a couple of years, whatever, the environment doesn't matter anymore that much because you found more pieces of you. So you're less lost, you know, in some way. You're less in this initial moment of awakening. So you have more anchoring and inner stability. You, you know yourself deeper. So the environment tends to become, you know, you're more adaptable. But I think at the very beginning, you need to reflect what's supportive of this moment of my life. What's supportive of new experiences? Who is supportive of not knowing? You know, this type of question. And then again, it tends to ease and to change and we're just who we want to be, you know, with others. But in this initial state, I feel it's important. Process of like authenticity or individuation, when you look at it more from yeah. Jungian perspective, is that in the beginning, we need a very soft and gentle environment. Yeah. Um, because you're still, I feel like when you're in a place of like, okay, letting go of so much that yeah. all you've known and going into this completely unknown aspects of life and actually not knowing who you are at all yeah. right? because that's what happens when you kind of uh, take off the uniform uh, uniform or kind of the role you play in life is that yeah you're very fragile you're you're yeah. kind of like this small mm -hmm. little plant that is just coming to the surface and I find like your roots aren't as deep yet yeah um, and what I've noticed is that in the beginning, I just also need to let go of like a lot of like my older environment of the environment that I grew up in, also through traveling, similar to you. And then when I've become more uh, kind of grounded in myself and who I am, I was able to come back in a way where I was also able to be that authentic self in older environments 
without out that fear because it's so important in order for us to be authentic or in it feminine energy like you said it's we need to feel safe mm, yeah like and i feel a lot of like that over masculinity in women especially is kind of an armor for not feeling safe um because it's very different i find than uh a healthy masculine energy that's also can express through a woman when it's more like really having commitment and consistency and a structure yeah um it, it's not defensive in any way yeah um, but it's also knowing that kind of like what i love is that the symbology you give in the beginning and also sometimes called like give the pearl is more the feminine and like mm. the shell is more the masculine mm, so actually yeah. the feminine is very fragile you yeah. know and vulnerable but that's also where its beauty and its strength and its vulnerability is in and um yeah so what helped you to really um uh, kind of deepen your roots in who you are so we kind of started from getting like i don't know who i am right and yeah going out discovering kind of into the open field yeah. possibility so what helped you to kind of root more into who you are today and sharing your message, like I said, intuitive messages and all these different things that for okay, people who are more into spirituality and intuition. It's like they're super interested in it, but probably most people kind of like mainstream. And especially when you started it, it was like kind of weird. <laughs> right? Yeah. So what yeah. helped you to kind of deepen your roots and express yourself authentically? To the yeah. rest of the world aside of like the safe circle so to speak yeah yeah so um so when i left um i feel what i was really looking for and i forgot to mention that word which is really big for me i think i was looking for freedom you know mm -hmm. and this is why i need to change environment it's because I could feel I had something to explore, but I feel at that time that in my old environment, I wouldn't have enough space to try and to do new things. And I feel when we change environment and when we, you know, meet new people, but also we feel guided to go somewhere or to try something. And that opens uh, new parts of us. It's like we have those parts, but then we are somewhere and we need to use it. So, you know, we did, we're not using it before. We didn't know it was there, but then, oh, there is room to, you know, show that, that skill or show that strength or show that part of us. So um, freedom and the possibility to really experience widely, I think is really key at the initial stages of the awakening, because often we have experienced and, and moved through only what we are used to or what we have been told to. Or, you know, I remember thinking that uh, if I was leaving those jobs and going so far away, maybe that would be dramatic. Maybe I would have to do the same job after. I, the truth is I had no idea um, what I'm doing now existed. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I could really do something that's different. So we kind of know where we're going and we must accept that we kind of know it because the mind only knows what it saw in the past or what it heard about. So if we make a big change and end up doing something we've never heard about before, it's normal that we don't know where we're going because just the mind doesn't have it in its bank somewhere. Mm -hmm. So freedom is really key to just experience and then we work with the feeling, what feels right, what feels fulfilling, what feels inspiring, what gives a lightness. We feel the change, we feel some things give us power, joy, um, a lightness, spirit, you know, all that. So um, just to say to people that will be listening that it's normal to not know and also in the process you'll know what's good for you based on how it feels, um, not analyzing or comparing or what or why, but how it feels, you know, you change from doing what you know or what you've been talked about or what what is in your environment to exploring and then sort of picking things and maybe many based on how they feel. 
so I find it important because at the same time it's scary and known, but then kind of fast it gets more known. So it's scary and not scary at the same time. Like it's not totally scary in some way um, because we can trust ourselves and trust the way things make us feel. And this is how we discover what's right for us or maybe, um, yeah, I think experiences just teach a lot is what I want to say. Um, mm -hmm. And you were asking about, um, let me see. Um, yeah, what helped me share the messages and all that. And maybe yeah. I, I was feeling uh, uh, a little scared or so that happened with many steps. And that's also something important to, to understand. We don't move from A to B in one night and, you know, with no, uh, broken plates. My grandmother would tell me, like, if you leave this place and do that, don't think you, you won't break plates. So this is a way to say that big changes don't happen overnight and they cannot happen just only smoothly and without fear and without fire. You know, it, it's important to understand that, but it's really like the, the price I think is lower than, than the gift, right? And then the blessings after. But I progressively, so I started to write for myself because I was in a difficult romantic situation. So I was writing just for myself in a journal, you know, not book. And I started to publish some of it in Rebel Society and some on Facebook. And I was just like feeling guided to do so and also feeling free, like feeling if it doesn't work, what the issue you know if it really doesn't work i won't do it again that's also the thing we don't um play with our lives by doing something crazy if if nobody reads or if it doesn't work then you know we we feel strange we feel low we feel like it's the ego it's pride but that's all and then it changes and then we're like okay i just try you know so progressively i posted on those web platforms and then on Facebook and so on. And eventually I saw, and I remember was an article in the Rebel Society that was about um, recreating our life based on our dreams, which was about taking leaps and, and just following an idea without knowing where we're going to go. That article had a lot of readers. And then I thought, but that surprised me because again, at that time, I didn't know we were many on the same path. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, maybe you're helping. Like, maybe it's not just for you and do something crazy and, you know, right. And maybe it's this, this is like, not only for you. So I was surprised, but then I continued and, and I kept, uh, you know, differently, of course, this time, but I kept having that feeling that um my ego felt in that, like, oh, I'm writing, it's interesting. But I could feel it wasn't really about that. It was also about other people moving through the same changes and having the same challenges. So the more it continued, the less I felt that me as Sophie was really connected. It was more, you know, like messages for the people that would be interested to read, right? So what I find interesting was intuition and even service, even being in an association, on profit, you know, many ways of being in service. Initially, we are drawn to it. So initially it's for us, but with time, you continue also because of others and because you start to feel that if it's helping, then this is what you had to do, you know? So it becomes less led by personality, more by spirit or something. Yeah, because when you fully move into surface, you kind of go um, beyond the self, or at least beyond the self you've previously um, known. Yeah, and I also find yeah. it very interesting because then it's kind of, um, you're kind of match kind of synchronistically to people who resonate with your work and with your words and with your messages. So even if there are a lot of people that don't get it, so to speak, because there will be people that don't get of it. Of course. You know, that, that is kind of something that we have to realize and kind of have to accept if when you actually 
that authenticity or like the uniqueness is that yeah it's something that sets you apart and for some people they will be attracted to you for you for it and other people will be repelled by it but it's always kind of both when it comes yeah. to authenticity or really uh, also being of service working with people really alignment with you and your uh, mis- mi- uh, message or mission um kind of that attracting and repelling is actually very a natural process which yeah. makes sure you're actually connecting with the people that you're meant to be in connection with um yeah no i, I really agree i feel that um we need to learn to be disliked also otherwise you know if you're always looking for approval from whatever parents boyfriend friends followers you know if this is what moves us then we always sort of a little like on the side and not really authentic Mm -hmm. so i think it is good also sometimes to be disapproved of and be disliked and know that it's impossible to be liked by everybody and I don't really think it exists so um, I discovered with the writing especially at the beginning that it was okay if some of my friends would not really understand were asking a lot of questions you know wouldn't understand why I was sharing so much or whatever I, I saw you know that they're glasses of the word at their point of view and it's okay it's valid but then i have to do what i i feel is good for me and we find what is good for us by experiencing you know one oh it feels good and twice oh it really feels good and then we continue because a process or a project like some things bring a joy so i feel what's important to understand also when um taking the journey of the authentic self is that joy is the sign. Uh, What brings joy is what's good and what's authentic and what must be followed through. And in time, even if we're disliked, we tend to experience more and more of that being at peace with the self and being at peace with our joy um, is a lot bigger you know, compared to receiving approvals from parents, boyfriend, cat, dog, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it is like saying true to yourself, like, and like I said, it's a process. It's something that you continuously do. And I feel like that's actually what deepens those roots or what you said, like uh, the anchor, feeling anchored yeah. within yourself. It's like continuously showing up for yourself and staying true to yourself and tr- and expressing yourself freely even though it's scary and i think a lot of times we can kind of want to fear to go away and it never goes away yeah and when i notice with my own writing whenever i write something that stretches me kind of or it kind of goes deeper or beyond like an area where i've written about before uh, or whenever I'm sharing something new, I also did it recently when I start sharing more paintings and artwork, which is really new to me, that fear is there. And I think a lot of people don't do these things or don't share or don't uh, make, don't undergo the transition or change hmm. where it has to become really painful, unfortunately. Yeah. It's because we're waiting for that fear or that discomfort to go away, but actually that transformation and the transition is actually going and moving through the discomfort and fight and moving forward with that fear um yeah so how has it been for you to kind of that um how is your from a different thing how is your relationship with fear changed uh, on your journey yeah yes that's, that's really important you're right um and I think you're right. I think fear, um, we have a new relationship with it. So we tend to get used to fear, you know, the way it feels, the way it feels in the middle of the action and then the way it feels when it's gone or something. But I think we never really lose um, the feeling of fear. And also, as you said, this um, awakening or individuation journey um, has many steps. 
And I feel somewhere we have major places where we arrive, but we never really arrive. Like we have big, big stops with a lot of that's established or a lot of that change or grew, but then it changes again. So maybe not just after, but it never really, I, I don't feel we fully arrive and, and we stop learning, exploring and, and looking for the next step, you know, we never really. So fear, I feel has to be accepted just as a part of life. And also it can be an indicator, like uh, if it's fear and excitement, often it's, you know, I'm scared, but it looks really, uh, I really want to go. You know, if it's both, very often it's very positive and sort of high energy indicator. The fear is a discomfort and the change, the energy is going through. And the excitement is a confirmation there is joy or experiences at least to be to be found. But sometimes we are very scared of something uh, and we don't have this excitement, maybe because fear is growing too big. So it's sort of lessening the excitement. So we can always think that we can wait. Like the thing also is maybe to not wait all life, you know, but it's normal to feel intuition, feel something changing and, and see how it sells. You know, we don't have to uh, be always on the go or always changing something or make a decision fast. Like if something must happen, and I really believe that it does happen, like we won't be able to resist the truth like forever. So it's not necessary to, if fear is too prominent, it can wait a little, you know, and then it counts down and perhaps we use tools we have, like we make a little plan or we talk to somebody, whatever, then it eases the fear and then we can maybe take action on, on that thing. Um, and in time, so how did my relationship to fear evolve? I feel the first time it really changed was the first time I really followed my intuition, again, by doing this first travel. Because I feel once we've done, we've taken one major leap into the unknown, then the following ones are different, but we know because we, we did it at least once that intuition is correct. So then it never was that much fear in some way. I feel the, the first leaps into something are always the the bigger and the more crazy, you know? So I, I would say just to people trying to follow their intuition, even for small things, to get used to it and to get used to the feeling of it. Like, I'm scared. I don't know, you know, I'm scared, but I feel cold to go. I'm going, oh, I was sort of right. Like I need to do this for myself. Or oh, that was the right decision. And so we get used even in small things, with small things to this emotional wave of fear, joy, you know. Um, and that teaches uh, in time that fear is a part of life. It's very hard to do something interesting with zero fear, you know. So we just learn to live with it in some way. Yeah, yeah and it's very interesting. So what has helped you to discern between um, when it comes, especially when it comes to more the intuitive or channeled messages, uh, helped you to discern between fear and intuition? Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes it can seem like something is intuitive, but actually it's coming from fear. And one example you already said to point on is that what I've noticed when it's energy feels very rushed, like you said, like the decision has to be now. Often it's actually coming from fear, not intuition. Um, yeah. To give one example of that. But um, how has that unfolded for you? And of course, again, that's a process that, that you develop over a long period of time. There's not like one <laughs> trick. But uh, what kind of um, helps you to discern uh, between intuition and fear? Because sometimes things, especially when it's more emotional, yeah. Things can become very entangled. 
uh, and feeling. Yeah. Uh, of course, intuition is feeling. Um, but sometimes we're in an emotional response. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally correct. Um, okay, so I think two ways to make the difference. The first is what you just said fear, like making a decision on fear with me is oftentimes rushed. Like it's like you feel a pressure, especially on the root chakra, like it's really like, uh, it, it's, you know, oppressing. Um, and even if, you know, for example, oh, I feel I must um, quit the job. Okay, I'm going to do it now. Even if eventually six months after we quit the job, then maybe it's not the right moment yet because maybe this day that's, you know, this is just because somebody said something crazy and so we have a reaction. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes both can lead to the same destination, like for a breakup. Oh, you know, like we break up one day and maybe a year ago, um, we had a massive reaction and wanted to leave straight away. You know what I mean? So maybe sometimes it doesn't really mean that the two won't lead, you know, in the same place i don't know if i'm you know if you you understand what i mean but it's not necessarily that making a decision from fear is bad or anything yeah um, yeah yeah well, what i mean is well maybe that's not the best example i think that fear and intuition oftentimes don't lead to the same uh outcome or the same decision i wanted to say that sometimes like that can happen that eventually they lead to the same. But even if they lead to the same uh, decision, the energy is different. And I would recommend to make decisions only if we can based on what feels more like intuition because fear is urgent, feels want um, like a fast answer. So when I'm scared, I need to know, you know, especially about big questions, I need to know now. Uh, what's going to happen about this big thing. Intuition is calmer, it's more serene, and it has more time. It's not rushed. So when I feel really pressured, I know it's more fear, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and also second difference, fear is more like comes and goes, but sort of comes fast, you know, you feel attacked by it, and then it leaves. Intuition is more like a like a big message around you. You know, it's always there. You listen to it or you don't. You're busy, then you forget. You know what I mean? But it's sort of always sort of like a big aura around you, always trying to whisper the same thing. Mm -hmm. While fear, sort of fear, and then um, maybe you never hear that message again. You know, it was like. Um, intuition is tends to stay around you, you know, especially if it's about big decisions, tends to be there, come back, come back, come back, you know, you want it, you forget, you want it, you forget. And often also it can have a more positive um, energy attached to it. Um, and I was always connect more with the positive messages, like, I, I would like to reach that, or I would like to have this vision. I would like to develop this project. Um, that does feel very positive. Fear often is more going to, to attack ourselves on what horrific, like horrible thing could happen. You know, they don't really, and even if it's, um, it's hard to explain, but Intuition oftentimes whispers, even if it's changed, it whispers uh, beautiful things we could try and pursue. Our whispers, our blessings, our soul is trying to catch in the long run. You know, it has a more beautiful, positive energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not, oh, this won't work. You, you'll break up. You, you know, all this attacks something is going on while well, i was listening to you what came up it's like intuition is more like a gentle touch yeah you know it's like a gentle touch it continues to kind of 
be there for you in time of need, but it, it's not going to it's interfere too much. It's not like, yeah. like it's almost fear can be like, it's kind of shaking you up. So kind of, it's really, yeah. Um, shaking things up. It's in intense. Sense. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's more, I think fear is more intense and, and, and intuition is, um, more like we gentle when it comes to, yeah. it, it's more gentle and it, it's, for me, it does comes very, um, respectful almost it's, it's um yeah. yeah also respectful in the sense of when we talked about timing like it's not going to force you to make the decision now it's just going to remind you of the decision that it's in your highest good it's almost yeah. like the choice is yours there's no force behind it and it's also interesting when i heard you say uh, something and then the line is that um whenever you want to know it all and like have to big answers that, that, that I need to know no no that's very that like that fear response and I notice whenever I'm in that energy of like mm. there's an unknown element which is always there when we do something new um and I mean that energy of I need to know I need to know because a lot of time you don't know because like you mentioned before there's you don't even know of all the possibilities because you only know where you've been. And what I've noticed is that whenever I'm really in an energy, of like sometimes I can get really into it, like I need to know. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to tap into my intuition to know. And then I never get the messages. It never yeah, because it's forced through. in some way. Yeah, because it's like that, I think that needing to know mm. is actually what blocks you from being open like you said in more the beginning it's the receptive state it, it, it's and that is an open state it's more a state of listening um and it's a receptive in the way where it's like a state where you receive so that's also yeah. the feminine energy of receiving um and not necessarily yeah, needing that's to true know. yeah and I feel also that intuition is, as you said, is kind, like it's like, it's soft, it's like the divine mother in some way, even if it says something major, like, you know, moving country, you know, but it's, it's protective, it's kind, it's, it's sort of, um, it's inspiring, you know, it says something inspiring. And fear is intense but in a more negative way right mm -hmm. and it's more negative also yeah yeah and what i also find very interesting because i'm now in the process of writing my book i've been in the process for a long time but now kind of really bringing it all together and i've been rewriting a lot of uh, not, not rereading i mean a lot of my journals so i've been seeing that pattern like so clearly and I think that's also the beauty of journaling over a longer period of time and consistently doing it. Even if you have sometimes a period where you journal less, it doesn't matter. But like for a longer period of time, I always say I always return to the pages. That's kind of. And what is yeah. so interesting is that you then start recognizing the patterns and it helps you to kind of rediscover yourself in a whole new way because then you can see exactly how fear shows up within you mm. and yeah then it gives you that awareness that for example now after rereading it i will recognize it so much more quickly and because like you mentioned that's why it's always difficult to give advice or share in a general context because like i said fear can show up in so many different ways intuition can speak in so many different ways so that's why it's always important in the process of coming back to yourself and seeing um, your own process. So what was it like for you to, in the process of writing um, your book, and for you, it's, it's more like a collection works, right? So different stories and poems kind of coming together. So um, yeah, what was that process like for you? Um, yeah. Um... I wrote those things when I was traveling mm -hmm. and they really came from like the core of my emotional process. 
and my intuitive process also. But a lot is about love and releases and discoveries and experiences. So I just brought it together because it felt like it's coming from the sort of same energetic time in my life, you know, the time of uh, leaving the old, exploring the new, feeling a little lost, and eventually finding a sort of new grounding. So this is what's in that book. It's really this awakening process. And it's a little scattered also like it was, you know, a lot of joy and then pain or sadness. And then, oh, inspiration. And then, oh, I've not arrived. You know, all those sort of waves that are really um, a key part of it because it's it's an endless journey in some way. Uh, and again, even if we tend to stabilize, um, I think many times in major places, it, it keeps going. Um, but at that time, I was expecting a destination, right? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of answers sort of fast. So um, the book is really like um, a collection of those different feelings. Um, yeah, so different sensations and joys and fears and and uh, changes. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but well, okay. And what are you working on now? Uh, just continue writing it, writing them intuitive messages, or kind of what is your vision now? Or yeah, yeah. So I have two uh, projects uh, connected to writing. The first one is. Um, like producing again a collection of a lot of updates I've been sharing because even if I feel they are timely for a day mm -hmm. they can also be read again like two months later or a year later and feel like very empowering I feel so um, I have this project to um, create a book with like for instance a hundred or maybe 365 of those and you know like empowering affirmations and then a card for people where they could draw all about it and write some thoughts or emotions connected to the affirmation so um, that's one project I have uh, I still need to you know think of it but this is one main project and also I'm, I'm writing some short stories um Partly memoir, partly invented, you know, partly fiction. Um, so those are the two um, main projects now. Yeah, interesting. It almost sounds like what you said, the messages, then it kind of becomes a little bit more like a, what comes to mind is an oracle book. You yeah. Know, like you said, because um, that is what can feel like a momentarily or a timely message because something is happening when you were in the collective or both uh, often it's very connected um and then still um a lot of what comes through whenever it's like a wisdom or an inspiration can still um be actually very like timely in a completely different time so to speak uh, yeah yeah exactly i agree with that yeah definitely yeah yeah, interesting. So um, if people are interested in kind of following your work and also re uh, reading like the messages that you share, how is it easy for them to find you and your work? Um, yeah. yeah, so they can find me on Facebook with my name or on Instagram with my name also. And I have a website, uh, www.sophiegregoire.com they can use. And they can find my first book on Amazon also, which is called She's the Moon. <laughs> okay, cool. And I also put some of the links uh, in the description. So uh, it's easy to find. And yeah, then, uh, Savi, I really want to thank you so much um, for coming on the podcast and sharing so much about your journey and everything you've learned so far. Uh, and your wisdom. Um, you Thank you for here. having me and inviting me. It was very interesting and, and lovely to have this conversation with you again. Thank you. Yeah. And I also want to thank everyone uh, so much for listening and tuning into uh, the podcast. And I hope you 
received a lot of wisdom and inspiration and definitely stay tuned for upcoming episodes and yeah and then I'm looking forward to reconnecting with you <laughs>